ruling to the Federal Bureau of Justice in 2009 um, based off of the amount of homicides in the United States from 2007 and 2008. On average, each year there are 20,000 murders, 125 death sentences, and 50 executions. So as you see, the numbers get smaller for death sentence and execution, and um, the death penalty is a very controversial issue for moral and um, legal reasons. However, um, not all states within, Cal uh, within the country even have the death penalty. Only 35 have it, while the other um, 15 do not. And the basic claim that I'm going to be supporting today is not whether it is moral or immoral, but if the death penalty is actually being effective. The um, reason behind this is to deter crime, to lower capital crimes, which are um, crimes such as murder. Um, so my main claim that I will be supporting is that capital punishment within the U.S. has failed to significantly deter rates of violent crime. For one, it's not certain. Secondly, because it insinuates that murderers on average are um, thinking rationally, and thirdly, because it has not actually led to a decline in criminal activity. So back to my first claim, not all murderers are sentenced to capital punishment, and this is basically showing that the death penalty is ineffectively carried out, which actually undermines punishment. According to the Death Penalty Information Center, only 2% of murderers are sentenced to death. In the New York Times, um, in 2000, studies conducted by criminologists showed that from 1976 to, to 1995, 75% of inmates that were sentenced to death were later given a lesser sentence after retrial. There is a long uh, appeal process, and a majority of these inmates are actually not even getting the actual um, sentence and also the execution. My second claim that I recently brought up was that the death penalty is ineffective because in many cases the murderer is irrational. For example, many criminals ignore the future punishment of the crime. Um, and according to deathpenaltyinfo.org, 65.5% of inmates on death row have a prior felony, and 8.4% um, of those same inmates have a prior homicide conviction. Therefore, you conclude that these people are being convicted and they're not learning from their crime because they are committing the same crime or you know another crime. Um, and also, there's testimony from Willie Williams, police chief of LA in 2008, said, I'm not convinced that capital punishment in and of itself is a deterrent to crime because most people do not think about the death penalty before they commit a violent or capital crime. To support his point, um, there's testimony from Morris Wasser prior to his execution. This is actually historic. In 1952, in Murder and Penalty of Death by Morris and Felon, he said, quote, well, this electrocution business is the buck. It don't do no good, I tell you, and I know because I never thought of the chair when I plugged that guy. I mean that you just don't think of a hot seat when you plug a guy. So that shows that from an actual criminal's perspective, he didn't even think of it. He acted impulsively. Uh, the second reason why some murders aren't rational is because many are um, premed unpremeditated and they're due to mental illnesses and crimes of passion. Um, for example, according to deathpenalty.org, about 5 to 10 percent of death row inmates suffer from serious mental illnesses. Therefore, they're not considered capable of um, being rational enough to understand what they're doing. And many of these people aren't even able, they're not sentenced to death because they're not rational and they cannot actually be executed. Um, an example of a crime of passion, which I recently talked about, is Mark Villela of Florida. He basically murdered his wife after he found out she had an affair. The night of her murder, she uh, told him that he was go she was going to leave him and take the son. And this was actually reported by Ron Chapman, criminal defense attorney of Florida in 2008. It actually occurred in 2002, the murder. And he even said, I couldn't take her leaving, losing her or the child. I just cracked. I couldn't take it anymore. No sleep, losing her, losing my son. I didn't know what to do. As soon as I did it, I knew it was wrong. I didn't know what to do next. 
So this is from him personally saying, I acted in the heat of a um, moment, and I didn't even know what I understood what I did after. My last claim is that evidence to prove that the death penalty lowers murder rates is insufficient. This is the most uh, straightforward because uh, death penalty states actually have higher murder rates, which is the opposite of what you would think. If it's a deterrent, you should have lower murder rates. Um, but in fact, according to 2008 FBI Uniform Report, the South has the highest murder rate, but the South account for 8% of execution. So that there's no correlation there between it being a deterrent factor. Also, the homicide rate in states with the death penalty um, has murder rates that are 48 to 101 percent higher. And even if you look at states that are actually neighbors, such as South Dakota and North Dakota, uh, South Dakota has a death penalty, North Dakota does not. South Dakota actually has a higher murder rate than North Dakota. And there's about pretty similar in population. I think they have a, a difference of about 200,000. And when they take murder rates, they actually uh, consider population size uh, by the way they calculate it. So basically, for the reasons that I have just stated, hopefully you can conclude with me also that the death penalty has failed to adequately limit the amount of criminal activity with the U.S. All right, you've got a good proposition of fact, but you kind of have it, uh, you've got a run-on sentence that then goes right into the preview, so that was a little awkward. Uh, but the preview points were uh, labeled very clearly, so that made it easy to follow uh, during the rest of the presentation. Uh, so that was pretty solid. I didn't think that uh, your first point was as well developed as it might be the second and the third points. The second point especially I thought was uh, pretty well developed and the third point has also got some good data on it. The first point you don't really kind of explain why the statistics about lack of executions or lack of follow through would impact the uh, success or failure of the death penalty and I thought that that was a little bit uh, underwhelming. But like I said, I thought the second and the third points, you developed them a lot more substantially. Uh, you're pretty consistent about citing the information. Um, it sounds a little bit like you're rushing, like I talked about uh, before, but it comes across pretty effectively. Uh, I thought the last point where you're doing the state-by-state -state comparisons, where you're emphasizing uh, two states that are similar, I thought that that helps make that argument a lot more valid for your position, too. All right. Thank you.